I rise with all praises to Allah, the Father of the universe, cherish and sustainer of all the balanced universes. Extend highs of honor to his holy divine prophet, prophet noble Jerah Lee, the founder of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Islam, Islam. extend high honors as well to his former, the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, the founder of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, who did indeed warn and stir up the nations. Islam, Islam. extend high honors as well to the Moorish flag. The red flag with the five-pointed green star in the center. These five points represent love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. These are the five highest principles known to man. Islam? Islam. We extend high honors as well to the American flag, also known as the Stars and Stripes. This flag exists as a constant reminder that the European nations owe you the Moors with compound interest. Islam? Islam. You give an honor to noble sheik staff, noble vanguard staff, for keeping peace. Give an honor to you, the ills and bays. For without you, there is no Moorish movement. Islam? Islam? How's everyone in the Holy Night? Oh, uh, praise Allah. Praise Allah. Um, i just like to open up. I don't, first of all, with all the powerful measures that came across the floor tonight, you know, I don't really have much to add on to that. You know, sometimes it feels good to sit back, you know, as a sheik in this movement, and hear one who's put forth measures rooted in our prophet. Islam, uh -huh. you know, because for far too long this movement has been misrepresented by ones claiming to be Moorish. But when, you know, upon inspection, you listen to it and weigh it, you know, it doesn't have that balance of weight of the scales demonstrated in the ancient Hall of Judgment scene back in Kenneth, you know. Where you had, uh, you know, Anubis and Tahuti and the scales and the heart and the feather, you know. So, you know, we use our prophet, you know, as as our, you know, as our counterbalance to anything that, you know, you know, you know, someone brings to us and introduces as Moorish, right? Um, but so tonight, all I have is the prophet, which which is which is everything. As long, all right. I'd like to draw from Moorish literature the article entitled the "Prophet Has Spoken." Firstly, in title alone, that title lets you know the Prophet Noble Jurali is absolute in his, in his determinations. Islam, Islam, what he puts forth is not optional, it is law. Let me hear Islam when everyone's there. Islam. Right? The prophet has spoken. Right? It reads, all governors and grand sheiks and head officials that guide anybody of the of Moors in of any temple of the Moorish Science Temple of America. He or she must be of good moral standard and a heart of love, and their works must be of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. They are to imitate the prophet in speech and teaching in any said temple. They must not be under the influence of intoxicating liquors or any other harmful motive that will terminate to become detrimental to the organization. It must not be known that any leader is staying away from home or neglecting his duty at home, or must allow the public to know of their wrongdoings. They must forever live the life of love at home, and it must be known by all members. They must not speak rash words, nor any profane language, in the mildest form to any other individual, because a leader without influence of good works cannot be a leader. And to be a real Moorish leader, you must study the Quran and the divine constitution that is handed down unto you by I, the prophet. No finance business is to be opened with any group of members of any temple, by the governor or grand sheik, or whosoever in charge without the consultation of I, the prophet. All uplifting funds, books, are to be issued only through I, the prophet, because that money is to finance the Moorish movement. The head of any temple can maintain an emergency fund which cannot exceed the amount of from 25 cents to 50 cents a week per member. Remember, since 1928. All public collections and dues also to the supporting of each said temple and its domestic work. No finance books are to be served in any temple except by the prophet. The head of every temple must obey the, oh, excuse me. The head of every temple must by law obey the word of the prophet. And if, in any, if any leader or head of any temple fails to obey these laws, embezzlement is his charge and is subject to enforcement of the law by the grand body. And the penalty may be a fine or a removal from office or placed under a very heavy restriction of the law. Supreme words of the prophet, 
Noble Drew Ali, Morris Guy, February 15th, 1929. Islam Morris? Islam. So as we see, the prophet did not play with leadership in his Morris movement, right? Um, the prophet wanted his, his sheiks, you know, to be of the utmost upright standard, right? He said, we are to imit imitate the prophet in speech and action, and then he said something, all right? And how do we judge the prophets? You know, mode of action. You look at what he's done. You look at what was written of him. You look at what he said, you know, the degrees he put forth himself because he, you know, he left his footprints clearly cut. So anything he told you, he demonstrated, all right? So that's the same thing, like, you know, I, I hear a lot of Moorish Americans, you know, they speak from a, 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 a defeated position up front. I always want more, when you speak, always speak from a position of power, right? Because in Negro, Black, and Color, Ethiopian, African American, ETC, we have been taught to speak from a position of subservience, of defeat, right? So when you hear people impart wisdom to people, they almost give it from a fearful place, right? Prophet Noble Drali teaches us, instructs us, that hope is the beacon light. So anytime you demonstrate amongst Asiatics, you got to remind them, you gotta, in, embedded in your message has to be a message of hope. Islam, Islam works? Islam. What is a beacon light? A beacon light is used for when ships are sailing, sailing on dark seas, Islam. chaotic dark seas, and to give them a direction, right? A point of origin, a point of which, from which to, you know, to sail to, all right? Um, you know, this is, this is what is missing in a lot of our demonstrations, right? And by and large, it's because, you know, most of us wasn't, weren't, were not born with these lessons. You know what I mean? We weren't, you know, our parents didn't impart them to us because they didn't have them. Our parents taught them, taught us what was handed down to them. Some of it worked, praise Allah, right? And we give honors to our mothers and our fathers for the good that they taught us. Islam was? Islam. All right, because we do honor our mothers and fathers. However, and I'll use myself, I don't put this on y'all. My mom taught me plenty of stuff that wasn't good for nobody, right? And it's because she didn't know. Islam? Islam. My mom didn't know, have her nationality. She had a Negro on her prison. Islam? Islam. You know? So there were certain things. So I have to, as, a, as an adult, as a thinking man, I have to delineate the things, okay, this I want for my mother, this I don't. This I want for my father, this I don't. Islam? Islam. And how do I do that? I use the prophet's measures that he, that he gave me as a thinking Moorish American, and I use that as the balance. Right? Let me ask you, so how many people have a council of people that when something goes wrong in your life, you take counsel with those people? There's something that there's a council and there's something known as crafty council, right? Most people have crafty council. Most people don't have council of <clears throat> higher light, right? Most people counsel is based on. In other words, you have friends or associates that give you advice based off what they feel, not based on immutable law, Islam. not based on universal law. Islam? Islam, you know, I have a few people, you know, and they're in this room, right? Period. They're not outside this room. They're in this room, right? That when you know things go awry with me, and I want to check see if I'm tripping, you know, that's the chief one I call over there, assistant where I go. She not there all year, just to see if I'm bugging, right? I'm on the run this past year, just see if, you know what I mean? It's not more you bugging. This is what the prophet said. The prophet said this is, says the law, and then he give me his determination as my brother based on the spirit and the letter of the law. That's true counsel. Islam, not based on how you feel. <clears throat> he freestyling what I think you should do. People that do that are not your friends. They're your enemies, boys. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that speak against the divine and national principles of your temples. Mm -hmm. Islam? Islam, they're the ones that speak from a position of misery. Islam, Islam. doesn't our prophet tell us that misery is one of the five foes of man? Islam? Islam, all right? Let's go to chapter of misery in our Quran. Chapter 44. Before I draw from this, chapter 44, um, Sheikh Nazar, would you mind that in the dictionary right there next to you? It's already open to the page. It's a page on the right, bottom left, uh, bottom, yeah, bottom left. Miserable. Could you give me the definition for miserable, if you don't mind? Is it miserable? Miserable. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> miserable, uh, very unhappy, suffering from misery, wretched, filled with misery. Bound in misery, uh, causing misery, very poor or mean, worthless, despicable. 
can go up to miser, the above definition to that. Okay. Uh, one wretched or afflicted, a sordid wretch, a niggard, one who is uh, one who in wealth makes himself miserable uh, by the fear of poverty, uh, like a miser or ha or in habits pertaining to a miser and niggardly again, sort of. Twice we have the word niggardly or niggard in that definition of miserable or miserable or miser. Islam. So let's read what our prophet instructs us on regarding misery. Instruction one, feeble and insufficient as thou art, O man, in good, frail and inconstant as thou art in pleasure, yet there is a thing in which thou art strong and unshaken. Its name is misery. Islam. Now, what aspect of the self is the, is the prophet talking about? Is he talking about the spirit man or the karma self? Karma self. Islam. That's what calls you to misery, because then you're finite. All right? Instruction two. It is the character of thy being, the prerogative of thy nature. In thy breast alone it resideth. Without thee, there is nothing of it. And behold, what is its source but thine own passions? Islam? Anybody familiar with the Islamic Salat? The, you know, the, you know, the, the broader Islamic world. So when you, you know, when you, before you begin your, you know, your, the actual prayer aspect of it, you know, generally ones will say, I will be him and I shaitan I seek refuge in Allah from the curse of Satan, right? Mm -hmm. Now if you're in your house alone and you're making salat, right? And you say, I will be him and I shaitan or it's just you in the room. Who's the curse of Satan that you? You. Mm -hmm. You, your own lower self. Islam? Islam? But we like to count it and attribute it to things outside of myself, but it's really you. Mm -hmm. Islam? And it's really the carnal part of you, mm -hmm. which is really false, and will pass or fade away. Islam, instruction three. He who gave thee these, gave thee also reason to subdue them. Exert it, and thou shalt trample them under thy feet. That's your cure for misery. You have to use reason. You have to study what reason is. You have to exert it. Right? It says, for instruction four. Thine an entrance into the world, is it not shameful? Thy destruction, is it not glorious? Lo, men adorn instruments of death with gold and gems and wear them above their garments. He who begetteth a man hideth his face, but he who killeth a thousand is honored. Know thou, notwithstanding that this is an error, custom cannot alter the nature of truth, neither can the opinion of man destroy justice. The glory and the shame are misplaced. Islam, Lord? So like now we're in a world where, you know, Shame is popularity, you know? I was listening to an interview this week, and they were talking about a young brother. He's a young rapper, so his name escapes me. But uh, he made a video of himself cutting, he was on house arrest. House arrest bracelet off. And he cut the house arrest bracelet off on camera, then ran off and made a rap video about him cutting the bracelet off. Uh, the police called him, locked him back up. He ended up back in front of the judge. The judge like, well, you know I can't offer you any bail. You know that, right? He actually was like upset about to cry in the court. What? Did you realize you kept, why would you do it on camera? <laughs> That's right? Glory and shame are misplaced. So he's looking for likes. He's looking for popularity on social media. Right? Glory and shame are misplaced. That's what people at, are at in their thinking. Islam wars? It's, Islam. it's the mindset of the people that you are sent to raise up. Right? So let's to the heat my instructions. Instruction seven. There's but one way for man to be produced. There are thousands by which he may be destroyed. Mm -hmm. There is no praise or honor giveth to him. Excuse part of There is no praise or honor to him who giveth being to another. But triumphs and empire are the rewards of murder. Now, we love to talk about the Moorish Empire, right? Oh, yeah. We love to talk about it. How do we get it? Oh, we murdered everybody. Yeah, you know that. Insight. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't through a conversation. I just read a story the other day that blew my mind. I gotta tell y'all this story. I'll tell y'all about y'all four five. <laughs> y'all familiar with General Tariq, right? Yeah. 7 11 AD, the motive took 7,000 Moors and conquered Spain and all that? All right. His grand governor was a brother named Musa ibn al right? He was from Arabia, right? Deep olive food Arabia, right? He was working for the caliph who was Al Walid, right? So they got the, the, the go ahead from you know, the caliph. They go ahead and take over Spain. Grand governor sends Tariq and them. They go in, they do their thing, right? Now, Tariq came and conquered all the way up to about central 
There's a battle called the Battle of Guadalupe. They con conquered up to about central Spain, got there, right? Subdued everything. Then Musa comes, you know, sends a missive saying, I'm coming, I'm bringing about 30,000 more soldiers, right? So he comes, the grand governor comes up, you know what I'm saying? He, you know, looks at everything. All right, good, it's beautiful. All right, time to count the spoils up, right? One of the spoils, ironically, was what they call Solomon's table, right? It's a long, ornate table, it's a long story, right? So ultimately, you know, the caliph sent for them, for both of them. Like, we need you to come back and give an account for, the, you know, the conquering. Right? So, it get, you, know, you know, it becomes a thing where um, Musa ibn Nasser wants the glory from Tariq, because, you know, the, the Tariq soldiers looked at him because he gave him the order, you know, he soldiered with them in the battle and the initial takeover. They're honoring him instead of the grand governor for, right? The grand governor felt slighted, right? He assembled everybody together, right? He rebuked General Tariq in front of everybody, slapped Tariq in the face in front of the soldiers. Mm -hmm. What does that do to the morale of the soldiers? Mm -hmm. They like, okay. You know what I'm saying? So they sent for uh, Musa. Musa goes to, um, you know, to Damascus, which was the, where the Khalifa was. He gets there, um, and he, you know, you know, they found out that Musa had actually stolen some money from the sports, and actually hid it from the Khalifa. So they actually had Musa. You know, tied up by his ankles and drugged, you know, all, all around the city. Right? Didn't kill him. Right? Um, then they went, you know, there's something like, if you read the, read the Constitution right now, it's, it was a practice in the ancient world known as corruption of blood. Corruption of blood is that in the ancient world, if you were found guilty of a particular thing, your entire genealogy was wiped out. Mm -hmm. Right? Or if they didn't wipe you out, they were dishonored and n nobody in the society would mess with them. The 1789 Constitution of the United States outlawed that, you know, in the, in the spirit of the new era of time that the prophet. Right? Um, Musa had a son that was, you know, left, to, you know, being charged in Spain. Um, word came down to decapitate him, right? Cut his head off, embalm it, and send it back to the caliph. Mm -hmm. So they sent the head back to the caliph. They cheered. And all that. This is what we were doing to each other. Mm -hmm. See the stuff that we're calling Negro, black, and colored, and all. That, you can't blame all that on the European. He's guilty of a lot, but there's some stuff we was already doing to each other. Islam, Islam. you know, because it's that triumph and empire, right? It caters to the lower self, right? And it makes you go to them five folds of man. Islam was? So the Prophet Noble Ali was very clear in all of that history when he raised us, when he instructed us. And he did not, what he said, in the oral states, allegedly, the Prophet says, that, you know, I gotta be, t you know, be careful how I wake y'all up, because y'all might tear up something. Because that's the spirit that we were in right before we went to sleep. The slime lords? Yeah. All right? So, you know, just be careful, you know. Y'all don't come from a real nice people. So, like, no. We got to work on that. It's something that's in us that we got to work towards. The slime? Uh -huh. Go to any of the older cities in the United States of America and see how we are on friendliness. How, how's friendliness in Chicago? You know. Islam. <laughs> Go to the bluff. <laughs> And see how friendliness is. Friendliness ain't real high in the bluff right now. That's loud? No. All right? Moving on. Instruction 9 it says, Yet he who hath many children hath as many blessings. And he who hath taken away the life of another shall not enjoy his own. While the savage curses the birth of his son and blesses the death of his father, doth he not call himself a monster? The greatest of all human ills is sorrow. Too much of this thou art born unto. Add not unto it by thy own perverseness. Grief is natural to thee, and is always about thee. Pleasure is a stranger, and visiteth thee by times. Use well of thy reason, and sorrow shall be cast behind thee. Be prudent, and the visits of joy shall remain long with thee. This prophet just told you how to be happy, right? Every part of thy frame is capable of sorrow, but few and narrow are the paths that lead to delight. And uh, Brother Justice, 2,000 years ago, demonstrated that in the Bible as well. Instruction 14. Pleasures can be admitted only simply, but pains rush in a thousand at a time. As the blaze of straw fadeth as soon as it is kindled, so passed away, part itself, so passed away the brightness of joy, and thou knoweth not what become of it. Sorrow is frequent, pleasure is rare. Pain cometh of itself, delight must be purchased. Grief is unmixed. But joy wanteth not its alloy of bitterness. As the sound of health, excuse me, as the soundest health, 
is less perceived than the lightest malady. So the highest joy touches us less deep than the smallest sorrow. You know, I, I often ask people, you know, how many of us know hate? Most of us are adepts at hate. But how many of us really know what love is? So Mr. Slamati did a powerful demonstration at school today with the babies. You know, they asked them to come up and, um, you know, correct me if I misrepresent your demonstration. You know, I had to kind of like hold hands in front of everybody and just hit the, hit the person whose hands you're holding with compliments of love. You know what I'm saying? And it was two little, two young girls. They, I mean, they were so, they were so cute. I mean, they, they were so bubbling with love. I mean, they were just laughing. They couldn't even get it out. They were like, I love you so much because what I need is something. And they just falling out laughing and stuff. And it was beautiful because to see that not all of us, I remember when I was their age, there wasn't much joy. You understand know what I'm saying? To see children and the conditions that we have out here to still be able to summon love on command, right? And not be coerced to do it. It's a beautiful thing. Islam? But we have to have these exercises and demonstrate love because we are strangers to love, right? Strangers to it. And we can't raise this nation being hateful beings. Contrary to popular belief, Allah's infinite creation did not create your form to hate. You try if you want to, right? We number one in every disease known to man. Why? Because we being everything else other than ourselves. Islam was? Islam. Moving forward. It says, oh, this is powerful. 18. We are in love with anguish. We often fly from pleasure. When we purchase it, costeth it not more than it worth than it's worth. Reflection is the business of man. Islam. A sense of his state. Is his first duty. But who remembereth himself a boy? Is it not in mercy then that sorrow is allotted unto us? Man foreseeth the evil that is to come. He remembereth it when it is past. He considereth not that the thought of affliction woundeth deeper than the affliction itself. Think not of thy pain, but when it is upon thee, and thou shalt avoid what most hurt thee. He who weepeth before he needeth, weepeth more than he needeth. And why? But that he loved weeping. <laughs> I love my prophet more. I don't know about y'all. I love no drop. Why do I even talk about the prophet more? That's powerful. You, know, you, ever heard, you ever known people that just love complaining? You know? And when you ask them, how you doing? Oh, I, you know, I just go into complaining and negativity and my job is this and that. It's not. We don't start this again. Take a deep breath. How you doing? And you got you to gotta try to pull it out of them. Right? Because there's complete strangers to this ideal, right? Moving forward, 22. The stag weepeth not till the spear is lifted against him, nor do the tears of the beaver fall till the hound is ready to seize him. Man anticipated death by the apprehension of it, and the fear is greater misery than the event itself. Mm. We got to get it together, boys. Be always prepared to give an account of that action, and the best death is that which is least premeditated. Islam, Lord. Surely Allah speaks the truth to his holy divine prophet. Prophet, noble trali, founder of the United the More Science to Prove Right. Islam. So, more just that's something. I, that's the, you know the piece I, I want you to work on. I don't have no super deep etymological measures this week, right? Um, I just want us to work on that. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, the prophet tells us to study the science of happiness. You know what I'm saying? You know, so he didn't just say be happy. He said study the science of it. So, you know, there's a process that goes about becoming being happy. You know what I mean? Like you're gonna be challenged by things outside of you at all times. All times. It's corner plane. That's what you're here for. Right? A lot of times people forget the very nature of where they're at. You know what I mean? They think things are supposed to be sweet like that, but they're not. You're here to be tried. You know, some will say tried, never denied, and willing to be tried again. <laughs> Islam, you know, Allah says, you know, in the Quran of Matthew, it's like, you know, you think you'll say you have faith and not be tested. You're going to be tried, boys. Comes with it. But when your trials come, how are you going to respond to it? Right? This is what you use. You know, get out your own understanding. Because if your own understanding was the salvation to get you out of it, we would you'd have never been in the predicament in the first place. If we knew the way. Right? You ever be driving with somebody and they're lost, but they won't admit it? <laughs> Mo, you know where you're going? I got it. I think I need you to make a left up here. Mo, you think you need to make the left up there, or you know you need to make the left up here? 
but they won't, they won't give it up. They'll drive the car straight off the cliff in the name of ego. Islam, right? And the, the, the true barometer to your methodology in life, you know, examine yourself, you know? Take an account of yourself right now, just like this is rhetorical. Take an account of yourself right now, more how do you feel, you know? You don't have to answer, just think, how do you feel right now? And if you feel less than, you need to apply these lessons. Islam, I'll tell you another test too. This is something I like the more to work on. I like you to go through all of the 48 chapters of Al-Quran, right? And Prophet said, you know, we can't be a pointer of the way. You know, you have to actually demonstrate it, right? right? Be the message that you bring. And if in going through all 48 degrees that are in here, and the sub-degrees that are in there as well, if there's anything that you feel as though you can't speak on relative to if I, if I demonstrate that I'll be a hypocrite, that's what you need to work That's Islam? That's where you put your focus at. If, if, if you open this text and weak and ignorant as thou art, or humble as thou art to be, and I'm like, nah, I ain't really, I think I need to work on my humility. It's proper said, humble as thou ought to be. Yeah? You got ones that walk around arrogant, won't worship from people. You know what I'm saying? But as humble as you ought to be, why ought you be humble? Because if you're in this physical form, you're going to err. You're going to, right? But if you're, you have arrogance problems, you know, and you can't speak on humility, then work on the humility in the, in the record. That's in the record. Islam, does that make sense? All right? Um, because the time will, will come where you will be called to guide Asiatics. And I tell you, Moors, the Prophet Noble Drali is welcome, you know, in various different places where Asiatics may be found. Prophet's welcome. If you represent a prophet, I tell you right now, it's red carpet treatment, you know. And I bear witness to the, the school that we, we've been speaking at for the past two weeks. Last week we spoke to a group of uh, about 20 students. This week it was a little over 50, you know, and they're working on bringing about four classrooms together, maybe one of the next times, you know, so we're talking about like maybe about 100, 120 kids, stuff like that. So it's growing, but the point is, is that we go in there as ourselves. Well, we go in there with these lessons. We go in there here. We don't, we don't go in there hiding. We want fezzes on, profit on, in front of them, and all of that. And the teachers are welcoming it. They're asking us, how are you able to get in an hour's time these children calm and engaged when we have them for eight hours in camp? Right? It's not us, it's our lessons from our prophet, boys. I'd be a fool to think I did that. Islam? Islam. Brother Raphael, Sister Lamadi, they be, you know, we would all be fools to think that we was the ones that was demonstrating them degrees. Something is added unto thee. Islam? You know? And that's the thing I tell them, man, a lot of times, you know, you know, you know especially sheiks, I like, it's a good thing to, to write a measure out and all that kind of stuff, but sometimes you're going to be called up to just demonstrate. And you ain't got your record. You got your record's up. Demonstrate the prophet. Islam, and if the prophet is not in your heart, you know, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart does the mouth speak. So if it's in you, when you're called to speak, it's going to come out. Right? If you are more sometimes, when you go to demonstrate, you're going to give a sometime measure. The prophet says, do not play the fool by the halves. Speak whole truth. Why your affairs is not adorned to plain truth, Moses. You have the whole truth. But you have to be the whole truth in order for it to be effective. Islam, Moses? Wow. You know, and I'm here to tell you, man, these babies, though, they love the prophet. When you introduce them to the, am, am I, can y'all bear witness? Brother Raphael, you have permission to sleep on. Do, 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 do children love the prophet? Wow. I mean, it, it's beautiful, you know, but you got to engage them properly. Islam, wow. you know, so, you know, this is just, you know, the work I'm trying to, you know, and it's, it's just beautiful, the fact that, you know, more to tell you, like, when, when, when I go to demonstrate stuff like that, sometimes I don't take everybody with me. You know what I'm saying? You know, because I have to be sure that when you get there, you're going you're gonna to demonstrate on script. You know, you ain't freestyling what you think, but you're going to give them a profit. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of times, it takes a time for us soldiering it together to get that together. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, because it's the power in speaking in one voice. That's what shows the nations of the earth are we serious. You know what I'm saying? Like, in other words, we go out to demonstrate, and whoever we're demonstrating with asks a question, five people answer it. It's a problem with that. You know what I'm saying? Or if each one of them ask something individually, it shouldn't be five separate individual answers. It should all have the same line uniting divinity and matter. You know, it should come together, you know what I mean, and, you know, and demonstrate that form of unity. Islam, you know, so we're getting there. And, you know, like I said, you know, the political realms that we want to get in are started in these realms right here. You know what I'm saying? When you go in them state, you know, them city-funded institutions, you know what I'm saying? And you start winning, you know what I'm saying, over 
you know, teachers, principals. You know what I'm saying? So today, uh, the city council person for this district, you know what I'm saying, is in tune with the school, trying to find out aspects of funding, so on and so forth. You see what I'm saying? So it's going to get out there that the Moors, you know, are doing uplifting acts at the school, right? So eventually, they'll be funding for the Moors. That's love? But you got to get a good name first. You know what I mean? Good name is worth more than everything. If you ain't got a good name, the prophet said, it don't take much to destroy the influence of good leadership. It really don't take much, you know? So we need everybody to, you know, to get their personal affairs in order. I don't know where you at in your life, but whatever it is, get it in order, right? And once you get in the order, I'm here, and you, you don't get it order, in order out there. We come together as a body to get it together. Because you have to be reminded of the truth. We all have to. Islam, you know, nature urges thee to inconstancy. Islam wars? All right? With that, I don't know what it means. Islam wars? Praise Allah. Islam? 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 Islam. 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 More signs stuff of America. Noble Drali found a home office. Chicago, Illinois, March 11, 1929. A warning from the prophet to be read in every meeting. I hereby inform all members that they must put an end to all radical and agitated speech while on their jobs, homes, or on the public streets. We advocate peace and not destruction. Stop trying out your cards with the Europeans, for it causes confusion. There has been much confusion caused by members trying out their cards. The cards are for your salvation. Failure of obeying my orders will be a severe consequence. We are for love, truth, peace, freedom, and when these principles are violated, justice must then take its course. Any member or group of members that seek to hold religious feelings towards the temple or the prophet or to violate the divine covenant of the Moorish movement will receive their reward from Allah for their unjust deeds. All true Moors must obey the laws laid down to them by the prophet, and if they lose confidence in their prophet, give up your card and button, cease wearing your turban or fez, and return to the state where I, the prophet, found you. For this is a holy divine movement founded by the prophet, Noble Jirali. And if the prophet is not right, the temple is not right. The prophet is sending out a divine plea to all true Moorish Americans that they may do their part in protecting the prophet and the temple. This is an everlasting movement founded by the prophet through the will of Allah to redeem his people from their sinful ways. Peace. Noble Jirali, Islam. 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 All praises are due to Allah. The highest of honors was holy divine prophet, prophet Noble Jirali, our angel. Islam was sent, you know, to warn the nations, to save the nations from the wrath of Allah. Islam was this is a powerful movement, Lord. Um, you know, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know what it's going to take, you know, for my proclaimed Kendrick to get it. I really don't know, you know, but I do know that, you know, the Prophet said Moore is a hard-headed, stiff-necked, never did anything except by point of a sword. So, probably with more calamity and more wrath, we'll learn to get it together. That's just what it takes sometimes. It just is what it is. Prophet, right? Um, but for those of us who don't need all of that, let us exercise our father when we're able to do so. Islam more, right? And continue to plumb the line and be, be the message that we bring and show people who our prophet is. You know, this, this is an environment where nobody knows who he is. But they will know prophet know what you are lead through us. Islam, Islam, honor your institutions. You know, it takes a lot to keep the prophet simple doors open, right? We have our own challenges. It's hard to keep them doors open. Islam, you know, and anybody that's, that's laboring to keep the prophet's simple doors open, that should be supported. Morally, financially, and spiritually. Islam. Islam, period. That's just what it is, and that's what it takes. And if we're not doing that different plan, and to look at Prophet Noble Jirali, look at this angel right here, and to think that we're going to play with his legacy, Right? He could have been doing other things with his life. He could have had a great time in a carnal life. But instead, from 27 to 43, he sacrificed the utmost of his very life, you know, to protect the, you know, the wisdom that was given to him by Allah to show us a better way. Right? And how dare we take what he gave us and be hateful towards one another and be spiteful and bitter and miserable and niggardly. You know, the, all the words that were in the definition of misery. Islam, how dare we be that and not be the best part of ourselves? And if we feel some kind of way, or if we feel in a way, we go into our records and we pull out what the remedy is for that particular film. Islam Moors? That's Moorish science. That's Islamism. And that's Prophet Noble Islam Moors? Islam. Everyone please rise. Face the east. This is right ahead of you. We close as we began. The tradition of our Moorish forefathers, Moorish American forefathers, please hold your feet at 45 degree angle. Standing on your square, your heels will be touching like this. Five on the left. Two on the, on the right, invoking the sacred presence of seven Elohim, 
that created everything that ever was, is, or ever more to be. For our visitors, please adopt a position of prayer that is comfortable for you and give a homage to our collective creator. Please repeat after me. Allah, Allah, the Father of the universe, the Father of the universe, the Father of love, the Father of love, truth, truth, peace, peace, freedom, freedom, and justice, and justice. Allah is my protector, Allah is my protector, my guide, my guide, and my salvation, and my salvation. By night, by night, and by day, and by day, through His holy prophet, through His holy prophet, Drew Ali, Drew Ali. Amen. Amen. Islam, Morris. Islam. Praise Allah. Allah. Ayya ala salah Allahu Akbar